Welcome to Doing Business Right, hosted by Dr. Brian Rea. This is a weekly conversation for business leaders and entrepreneurs who have an invested interest in doing business right. Here is your host, Dr. Brian Rea. Awesome. Hello and welcome to this edition of Doing Business Right as part of Northwest Arkansas Business Radio X. My name is Dr. Brian Rea and I will be your host today. As an entrepreneur and small business owner in Northwest Arkansas, I want to help connect our business community together through collaboration and networking. Doing Business Right is a podcast aimed at helping both new and established small business owners as well as those who may be thinking about entrepreneurship. We do this by sharing our stories and insights from local business people to encourage strong and efficient small business growth. So before we get started, I do want to make a quick little announcement that I just published my first little mini book on Amazon, Quick Advice to Promote Your Business. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Quick Advice to Promote Your Business from Ground Zero. Some simple tips to overcome early marketing challenges for entrepreneurs on a tight budget. Uh, If you want to search it on Amazon, you can look through my name. Just type in B-R-Y-A-N, Brian Rea with a Y. And make sure you remind Amazon actually search for the Brian with a Y because we'll we'll try to send with the Brian with the I. Um, But I would love for you to check that out. It's both available on ebook and paperback, so check it out. And then I'm also in the works of making my next book, uh, The Essential Small Business Guide to Financial Management. So keep an eye out for that as well uh, here in the next few weeks. So today... I am super excited to have my friend and guest, Jamie Stanley with American National Insurance. How are you doing today, Jamie? I'm good. Thank you for having me. All right. Awesome. Well, we're super excited to have you here and talk about some topic that people are like, might not be interested in, <laughs> but insurance and like, well, I don't know. But again, there is huge value to understand that. And again, insurance agents are people too, with their Great. own yes. stories, <laughs> with their own feelings and their own perspectives. And uh, I got a great one here today to share her story and what she does in the industry. So, Jamie, let's get this started. Just tell me about your background and how you came to about insurance. All right. Well, um, I'm from North Texas. A little about me. I have a husband and we have two two daughters. One's almost 20 and one's almost 18. Um, I actually started in the insurance industry in 2005, oh, wow. um, so almost 18 years ago now. Um, I had actually worked for a swimming pool builder okay. as a scheduler, and they did some layoffs, and I got to be one of those people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, me, myself and about 100 people were laid off. Um, so I uh, had my first daughter at the time, and she was maybe four months old. So I needed a job. Yeah. Um, telling my age, I faxed about 100 resumes out wow. to um, some <laughs> newspaper. You hear that? 100, 100. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. On the <laughs> landline, guys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Brian, can we just stop and celebrate what we just heard here? That was awesome. <laughs> yes, the old school landline, 100. Awesome. I couldn't quit pumping my fist in the air. I was so excited. Thank you, Adam. Sorry. So, yeah, I looked at the newspaper, found a whole bunch of fax numbers, and I just sent them out. Um, I actually had an insurance agent reach out to me. Um, they did not hire me at first. Um, they hired somebody else, and she couldn't hack it. So, um, I got called back in. <laughs> manager okay. and uh, answered phones, paid bills, etc, etc. And I ended up getting my license, um, did a lot of customer service, and then I started selling, and then I got my life insurance license a few years mm-hmm. later, and I ended up being there for almost 13 years. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Good chunk of time. Yes, and then um, in 2017, American National reached out to me. I did a lot of commercial insurance, and so they wanted an agency here in Fayetteville. Mm. And um, talking with the family and loving the area, we ended up making the move. And I have been open almost six years now. Oh, wow. So, so kind of American National and, and this opportunity here in Northwest Arkansas is what actually brought you and your family to Northwest Arkansas. To Northwest Arkansas. Oh, yes, wow. So, yeah. uh, so you were doing all your initial stuff in North Texas mm-hmm. up there. Mm-hmm. Okay. My husband had his business. I had my business. And we just 
Move the ball. <laughs> All right, and you just make it work, right? We yeah. did. We An opportunity work. presented itself. You discuss with your family, hey, how can we make this work? And you're like, yep. Let's. We were hungry for a few years, but we made it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, yeah. like you know, you know, if you're on a little diet for a few, you know, yeah. trying to lose like a couple pounds, that's one way to do it. <laughs> go, go into entrepreneurship. That's, right. that's one of your best it's weight loss programs. Fasting now, right? <laughs> Exactly. Fasting, you know. Maybe that's not another book title on it. Yeah, fasting for entrepreneurs. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So, okay, so look, that's, you know, a, a great simple story, you know, um, you know, just, I love that, you know, how opportunities sometimes you, you just put it out there and you just never know what you're going to see. That's right. You never know what's going to, who's going to reach out to you, what opportunity, and, and maybe the first time they didn't hire you and they're just like, oh, but, you know, you, I think have that positive attitude. St staying motivated mm -hmm. and then jumping into an industry that you maybe didn't know a lot about probably nothing, when you first nothing about, it, yes. nothing about right, right right and you kind of learn as you go mm -hmm. and you get more training and you get more into it and now you are almost 20 years into the industry yes. of, of all this experience of about insurance and so let's talk about this <laughs> insurance thing all right let's transition to this and specifically about small business and entrepreneurship and even a lot of that commercial insurance, right? Because um, I think a lot of people think about insurance, oh, I have auto insurance, I have life insurance, and that's all they kind of think about. And then they have uh, an entrepreneur who wants to be like, well, I want to start a business, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and they totally forget about this insurance thing that mm -hmm. they should probably have. So let's just talk about, hey, you know, what's the benefits and value for uh, small businesses to have insurance? Sure, sure. Um, I think a lot of the insurance industry is the layman people, if you will, mm -hmm. um, thinking, okay, well, I've got a loan, got to have insurance, because they said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they told me I had to. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There is much more to it than that. There is a lot of protection from your personal life. Um, if you own a business, you're a single, single member LLC, and you don't have insurance, and you cause somebody monetary harm, they're coming after you and your family, mm -hmm. and your funds, your yeah. house, your cars, your whatever you may have, your savings accounts. Um, so that's what insurance protects, is you and your family, um, whether you own a business or not. Um, bigger scale, your business. Um, if you have employees and you're sued and you have no insurance, you're going to have to get rid of those employees. Now all those people are no longer eating. Um, you have liability insurance for a reason, mm -hmm. not just because you have a loan. There are bigger things to it. Yeah, the idea of protection. Yes, right. Definitely. The idea that um, I know we never want to think about these worst mm -hmm. bad case scenarios, mm -hmm. right? But you've been in the industry long enough that you just hear like, oh wow, yes. you know, and, and and you don't want to be in a position for you, the, your business, your family, and especially if employees right. to put them in a very bad position because you're just trying to save a couple bucks or try to skim off mm -hmm. and like I won't pay for that or go for like the cheapest policy exactly. possible yes. so just to you know as you I'm sure people talk to what can I get for cheap yes. well, I, <laughs> and again often. they can you can get insurance for mm -hmm. cheap mm -hmm. but then what are you really protecting right all right and so let's talk about that so um, so when it comes to entrepreneurs and small business like so who needs insurance in the small business world, like this, this more specifically in some industries. Um, everybody, um, to throw that out there, anybody who owns a small business definitely needs some insurance. Needs some liability insurance. Um, it separates your personal and your your business, of course. Um, I deal a lot with contractors, mm -hmm. um, so there are a lot of contractors out there that have small businesses. Maybe they've left a larger company and they're one man shop now. They forget that insurance aspect. Um, but those are the people who really need it the most. Um, if, for instance, there's a plumber and he goes in to change a whatever, a dishwasher yeah. and causes a flood in the home, huh. yikes. Um, he's going to have to pay for that. He's going to have to repair all that himself if he does not have that insurance. Mm -hmm. um, that can be hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. And to have that insurance, that liability coverage, for whatever, let's say the cheapest, five hundred dollars a year, you've got a million dollars in coverage. Oh wow! That'll take care of you. Wow! Yeah. That'll handle it. Um, so things like that, where 
you know, you can pay a very inexpensive amount and have a lot of coverage. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, contractors are kind of my biggest thing that I see where they're also underinsured. Um, they don't account for having employees, things like that. Um, if you've got two employees at one home and two employees at another home, you've got a fleet of people, but your insurance company only shows that you're the only employee, there may not be coverage. Oh, okay, so yeah. you need to make sure you stay in contact with your insurance agent as your business grows as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, ask those questions with your insurance agent. Mm -hmm saying, hey, I'm hiring somebody else, or I've expanded this operation, or you know, even maybe new equipment, or, or you have a new service. Mm -hmm. I know we've talked about this before, like if you're doing just fencing, right. that, that requires one type of insurance, right? But if you're going to do fencing and roofing, right, exactly. right, if you expand, you need to make sure that you're talking to your agent to go, hey, what do I need to adjust for that? Uh, because obviously roofing is much more Dangerous, dangerous. It has, has <laughs> yes. some more Certainly. things and issues that you might need to be covered. And, and we've talked about this before where people can get in some bad situations. There are um, some things that you can combine, which I think mm -hmm. is really great, um, that a lot of insurance agents don't know. Um, so, for instance, contractors, back to that, um, I have a contractor and he does plumbing, but he also does landscaping. And his previous agent had told him, well, you need two separate policies. No, you don't. You're a contractor through and through. We just need to list both of those risks on your policy. Okay. Um, so he was able to save money as opposed to having two different policies. Mm -hmm. He thought he was going to have two different business names, et cetera, et cetera. He didn't need all that. Yes. Um, there is something to a commercial insurance agent knowing those interests intricacies so yeah for sure uh, and, and again <clears throat> having someone informed who knows about those type of things uh, because it is different than personal mm -hmm. I think a lot of people anybody who's in entrepreneurship they're like they, I see that with bookkeeping and money and finances same thing goes with insurance goes with any type of aspect that they're uh, wanting to consider um, so we talked about you know who needs insurance and why they kind of need some insurance so so what are some of like you know uh, some penalties or some, some some scenarios where like not having insurance can really mess up their business. Um, we kind of talk about like mm -hmm. some what what experiences do you have with that? Um, well, so there is also an umbrella coverage for business owners. Um, so you can get your plain old general liability mm -hmm. um, as a business owner, and that'll cover liability, but it's pretty basic stuff. So if you cause a fire at a home, we'll cover it. Um, but there may not be things like if I knock over a vase that's very valuable in somebody's home, and you know it's two hundred thousand dollar vase or a painting okay. or whatever. Yeah. That may not necessarily be covered on that general liability policy. Um, so there are some additional coverages that you can have in mm -hmm. policies. If you're in anybody's home, you need coverage like that. Period. Um, there is also what we call an umbrella policy. So if you ever exceed, say, that million dollars on a policy, so you get sued for two million dollars, mm -hmm. this umbrella would also kick in for an additional million or two million, all the way up to four or five million. Oh, wow. So, okay. And they're very inexpensive policies to have. Um, they're a lot less risk for an insurance company. It doesn't happen often. But if you've got several employees, maybe several fleets mm -hmm. of a team, that is something you definitely want to think about. Um, they, if you had that million and they sued you for two, two, two million, then yes, that's what they're doing. They're going to come after you yeah. personally. Yeah, so. that, that extra, like, well, mm -hmm. there's that first million. I yeah. need the rest of my money. Right. And they're coming after you. Not to mention your lawyer costs, etc. things oh, like that. Oh, yeah. And that is in your liability insurance. Okay. So we do cover that. Okay, so a lot of those uh, specific, you know, extra costs that, you know, I mean, I'm even thinking about besides just paying, you know. Right that. Right. Um, gosh. Uh, and, I, and again, which when you really think about it all, it's, you know, and we're not trying to scare people. We're not trying to like, of yeah, the, I think there's an idea that insurance agents are trying to scare people into like buying all these things and products and it's not. It's just being informed and understanding that depending on your business, right, depending on what you're doing, you know, and how big it is, right, there's flexibility in those policies. Of course. Yes. This flexibility and communicating like this is what I have, this is what I need, and having a good agent um, can help. Okay, let's craft a policy that works for you. Works for yes. you. 
um, and, make, and it could possibly save, save you lots of money. Right. So let's talk. We talked about like these insurance agents and talk about that. So let's kind of transition to you. Okay. Right. So what do you do? What have you been doing for American National Insurance, and what are your plans moving forward here? Um, my focus. Well, when I started with American National Insurance, my focus was sell anything and everything you possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> sell. Just make money. <laughs> yes. And I went back to selling a lot of home and auto. Mm -hmm. um, personal lines, umbrellas, some um, uh, business insurance, things like that. My very first year I did actually make the most commercial sales in um, the region. Wow, congratulations. So, uh, thank That's you. Incredible. Um, but we were just getting into the commercial sector in uh, Northwest Arkansas, So, but I was still proud of that. Um, I have transitioned to mostly doing commercial insurance. Mm -hmm. um, that is my forte. That's what I love to do. It's what I've been doing for the past 12 years. Um, with my previous carrier, so it is what I love. Um, it's a lot more moving parts. Every business is different. Um, I can have one plumber that needs one thing and another plumber who doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that you can do for your employees on our policies. So if you want to cover your employees' tools, we have that option. Okay. Um, yeah. If you have a great employee, you want to keep them around, hey, I'll cover your tools for you, you know, things like that. So it just depends on the business. I like to give knowledge to my clients. I'm not a salesperson. I'm the worst mm. salesperson ever. <laughs> <laughs> I like to talk to my clients, talk yeah. through what they need, um, offer my information. Um, if they take it, they don't, that's fine. Sign right here. <laughs> um, saying that you don't want that coverage. Um, but I'm more of the person who wants to give you information. I want to give you the knowledge of the policy that you have. I hate, with a passion, selling a policy to somebody that has no idea what I'm giving them. I'm like, okay, well, can we talk about this first? No, just put it in place. Mm, can I tell you what it is first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, so it really hurts and, me. And does, does that happen a lot where people are like, just, just where do I sign? Mm -hmm. Um, not as that? much anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of forceful when I tell them that I want to go over their coverages. Um, or I'll just start rolling through them. Here's what you got. Oh, what is that? And then they want to have a conversation. Um, so I try to stay away from, here's $1,200 sign here. I try mm -hmm. completely to stay away from that. Yeah, and I, I think that's a great approach, right? So here's, um, here's our policy. So, and you just get right into it. Mm -hmm. So there's this. I do. And there's this. And there's all these little acronyms and little terms and mm -hmm. and, and I've seen, if you've ever, I'm not sure most of us have seen insurance policies and you're <laughs> like, what is this? And you see all these little charges like, what's this two dollars for here and what's this six dollars for this? And mm -hmm. and you should ask those questions. You really should ask those questions. And if your insurance agent isn't talking about them, right? It's then not beneficial. It's not yeah. It's not beneficial for you because you you're not informed. Right, and you might be getting something that you don't really need or really want. Mm -hmm. So you go line by line, right? This is I what do. this is. Before you even give the price. Oh wow. I say here's your liability coverage. Here's your property coverage. Here's this. Here's that. Here's why we have this because you're a plumber. Here's why we have this. Mm -hmm. And then I'll say, okay, how does all that sound? Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then it's twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Whatever that price may be. Yeah, and I think that's a great approach to it, right? Um, I think. When it goes into marketing and sales, I know you don't like sales and you don't never want to say, and some people just want to know how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just, oh, it's just going to give this amount. But I think, you know, for like, well, for any product or service you're, you're selling or promoting, this is what I have, this is what I'm going to do, this is going to cost this, it covers this, this, and this, and this, and this. I think the consumer, I think, even if they might, don't think they want to hear it, deep down, yes. They actually do want to hear it. <laughs> they, they do. I like to think so. Yeah. Well, I think they do. I, I really think they do. And I think as you get better, which I'm sure with your years, you would get better, more concise about it. You know, you already know what questions are probably going to ask. It's always changing, just like any industry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what is like? Uh, uh, so what are some of the biggest questions people kind of get confused on when they're looking at these policies? Like, what do you mean by this or what is? Um, so let's talk, I guess, business insurance. Um, 
there's you know business income coverage. So mm -hmm. if, for instance, let's say I own a retail store, a boutique, whatever it may be, and there's a fire next door, and it ruins my stuff, I can't be open, right? So there's a coverage on our policy that gives them the business income for up to a year while they're rebuilding, remodeling, restocking, etc. Oh wow! So they're not losing money. There's a coverage where they can pay their payroll yeah. at any time. Um, so they're not losing their employees. So there, there are so many different things on our policies that you know, and a plumber may not need that. You know, mm -hmm. they can go get a job somewhere else or you know work for Home Depot or whatever that may yeah. be. Um, but if you're if you're in a, a brick and mortar mm -hmm. type of like, well, this is my store. Right. This is my you can't be in place, there. and something happens, mm -hmm. and your whole revenue source goes from generating you know thousands of dollars a month to, to zero. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, like it's, and it could be not even your fault. Like it was the fire next door. It was an accident that happened. Right. Things that were out of your control. Um, to have that type of coverage, you know, like, you know, again, that, going back to that protection, mm -hmm. going to have, like, hey, if well, this happens, you know that your business is going to survive, you're going to have right. some options. That's that, a coverage that your loan company doesn't care if you have, mm -hmm. as long as you're paying that loan. So as a business owner, you want that coverage, but if you're going to get an insurance policy for a loan, they don't care. <laughs> they just want, yeah. They just want to make sure you're paying your bills. But oh, as a wow. business owner, you want to make sure you have that business income so you can pay your bills and pay exactly, your loans. Exactly. So there's things like that that it's hard to get people to understand that mm -hmm. that's what you're using the insurance for as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you have any challenges with like communicating? Is it, you know, some people just don't understand or some people don't get it? You know, how do you get people to understand? You know? Stories. Scenarios. Yeah. Um, as an insurance agent, my biggest um, thing is stories. Mm -hmm. is, uh, unfortunately, I have seen a lot. Um, and to be able to give those stories, whether they be positive or negative, um, to be able to show how it's used, how that coverage is used. Yeah, exactly. No, I think that's super important. And, I, and again, having a, a great insurance agent, I know we've known each other for months now, and I've I heard to give presentations, and you know, it's just like every time I talk to Jamie, <laughs> I learn something new about insurance. <laughs> it's 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 amazing, and for people out there who are like, ah, insurance, I was like, there are so many things that can really help your benefit uh, benefit your business, mm -hmm. that can you know make sure it has sustainability, it has protection for you know worst case scenarios if X, Y, or Z happens. It's so important. I just think that you know make sure. I can't stress it enough. I can't stress it enough. Go talk to someone, and if you're, especially if you're in NWA in this region, like Jamie Stanley is one of your best names out there. I can't, I can't say that enough. Go see Jamie Stanley. She's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we're about to kind of wrap it up here. I think it's again, it's been a really nice conversation just talking about business and and, and insurance and all that type of fun things. Uh, I know we could probably talk really nerdy for the next like <laughs> hour or two, uh, but again, uh, I think just covering some main points is huge and that concept like doing business right. We want to make sure that businesses are on the right path so that they can be efficient and sustained for the future. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to um, uh, Northwest Arkansas Business Radio X and my friend and colleague Adam here, and he's always looking uh, to help people and, and you know get people involved in our community. Now I'm going to turn it over to Adam on um, what you're doing over here in Northwest Arkansas. Thank you so much, Brian. I want to thank you, Jamie, for coming on this morning for some quality conversation. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Business Radio X just recently relocated our studios. We're now down in the Campbell Bell building down in the basement. Uh, suite 001B and uh, if you want to come by and see something really cool come by and see this studio we're doing a lot of great things want to remind the listeners of doing business right about our hometown hero program that's our community program that allows you as a small business owner solopreneur entrepreneur to come in and partner with us for a minimal fee a month and uh, we're gonna make you look really good as part of our hometown hero program so if you want more information about that go ahead and email me here at the studio, and that's adam at nwabrx.com. So that's all I've got, Brian. I'm going to send it back to you, brother. All right, awesome. Thank you, Adam. All right, we can come back to Jamie, and we're just going to get some final thoughts 
about doing business right, you know, as an entrepreneur or small business leader, and, and I've, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of things you can think, think about, but what do you want to share with our listeners about doing business right? Uh, doing business right, becoming knowledgeable about my client's business situation and making sure that I'm given a policy that fits. There's no one-size-fits-all policy. Yeah, and I think that applies to any business. Definitely. Right? Know your clients. Yes. Take the time, to, whether it be market research, whether it be having those conversations, understand what their needs are, yes. and then do a product or service that meets those. That meets those, yes. Right? It, it seems like a simple formula. But man, it's so easy for us to get distracted mm -hmm. and start doing other things and thinking we know our clients better than they. Right. 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 Actually right. talk to your clients. Get to know your clients. That's a wonderful thought, Jamie. All right, awesome. Let's close this up. Thank you for tuning in to Doing Business Right. I hope you found today's insights um, good. I, I, I'm just like still like, wow. I was just like, I have all these like insurance things. I was like, I know. On that. But, you know, valuable insights on implementing good business practices, again, and generating innovative ideas to foster and develop the growth of your enterprise, right? For further knowledge and effective business practices, uh, go check out my other episodes, and you can see those on dbrbookkeeping.com. A quick reminder, I do have my first book on Amazon, uh, available both as an ebook and paperback, Quick Advice to Promote Your Business from Ground Zero, Simple Tips to Overcome Early Marketing Challenges for Entrepreneurs on a Tight Budget. I would appreciate it if you were to go check it out and leave a quick review for the book. If you want to stay updated on what I'm doing and what DVR is doing and doing business right, yeah, you can like my Facebook and also LinkedIn, all at DVR Bookkeeping. If you are interested in sponsoring a podcast or seeking advertising opportunities for your business, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or Adam, and we would love to get you hooked up into this new exciting opportunity. Uh, we would be thrilled to collaborate with you and promote your venture. Our podcast is growing within the business community and providing an excellent platform to connect with fellow entrepreneurs in Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host. Dr. Brian Rea, and I wish all entrepreneurs and business owners the utmost success by doing business right. Thank you for listening to Doing Business Right. For more information about Doing Business Right with Dr. Brian Rea, visit our website at dbrbookkeeping.com.